Nuclear Obscure Expedition 33 was a surprise hit by Sandfall Interactive, a small studio based in our neighboring country, France. It combined stunning visuals with an intriguing story and interactive turn-based combat. I've spent around 35 hours in this grim yet colorful world and I have opinions, but I also have benchmark numbers, which are the focus of this video. I purchased the game on Steam and as one would expect, it just worked on Linux. I did not force any Proton version and let Steam handle it instead. Throughout my playtime, I experienced no issues whatsoever. Expedition 33 felt like it belonged on the platform. Windows also worked without problems, which should be expected. I tested on my AMD Ryzen 7800X3D with 32GB of DDR5 6000 megatransfers per second memory and an AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. Windows 11 was on version 24H2 as of June 2025. My Linux installation was a regular Fedora 42 workstation with GNOME Shell on Wayland running kernel version 6.14.11. I tested at 1440p and 4K and evaluated three graphics presets at each resolution. I ran every benchmark pass three times consecutively instead of performing three separate runs and averaging the results. Wait, Evron. The two locations I chose for testing were worst case scenarios in the game. One was the overworld, which rendered many distant locations due to its oddly scaled design and zoomed out view. It also made heavy use of a beautiful depth of field effect on the highest quality preset. The second location was the Gestral village, that you'll try to locate when first entering the overworld. Compared to all other levels, it was less like a corridor and geometrically very dense. It also contained many non-player characters, although they were static in nature and did not appear to be controlled by an AI behind the scenes. For testing and playing, I ended up disabling motion blur and chromatic aberration. These settings were not part of the built-in quality presets and remained unchanged even after selecting a different preset. Let's start with the 1440p results first. The 9070 XT was powerful enough to handle this resolution without upscaling, although ultra quality was at the edge of a smooth 60fps average. Windows was ahead in every situation when considering only the average frame rates. On the overworld, it was approximately 5-6fps to 6 FPS faster on average, but within the realm of run to run variance when examining the 1% lows, it was functionally equal in consistency. The gap widened in the gestural village, increasing by up to 10 frames per second. The 1% lows were, once more, basically identical. Windows was ahead technically, but that's as much of an improvement as the RTX 5000 series was to the RTX 4000 generation. Moving on to the 4K numbers, we see more of the same. Please note that I enabled TSR upscaling and set a custom scaling factor of 65%. This almost matches DLSS quality preset of 66.7%. Otherwise, 4K native would not be playable without reducing the visuals down to Steam Deck levels. As the load on the GPU increased, the contestants moved closer together. However, Windows 11 still took the lead, but Linux managed to close the gap by a couple of frames in every test. I assumed that increasing the GPU limit further by changing the upscaling factor would bring both even closer together. An upscaling factor of 65% yielded nearly the same performance as native 1440p rendering. It appears that the lower the load on the GPU, the greater the difference in favor of Windows 11. As I lowered the graphics presets, Windows 11 pulled ahead further. I wonder if this could be the Proton translation layer eating more CPU cycles? A little bit of napkin math shows that Windows was ahead by 7.4 FPS on average in 1440p and 1.7 FPS in the 1% lows. At the 4K resolution, the difference shrank to 4.8 FPS on average and 0.2 FPS for the 1% lows. Either way, from my perspective, Windows and Linux offered the same gaming experience. Of course, this overlooks the fact that Windows may desire to install updates while you're trying to relax and have fun, or it shoves a you're almost done setting up your PC screen in your face when you're logging in to have fun. But I digress. You get the idea. My Windows 11 performance was demonstrably better and the perceived gaming performance was essentially the same. Please note that my results are based on an unmodified standard desktop Linux distribution without any modifications or tweaks. I tested the default experience of a general purpose installation out of the box. Gaming focused distributions such as the long awaited SteamOS or community driven variants like Bassite may have optimizations that skew the results in another direction. Using an Nvidia graphics card may also yield significantly different results.
So, what do I think? Well, objectively speaking, Claire Obscure Expedition 33 was an outstanding game. If you're into the style of gameplay, it is an exceptional experience. Although the core premise of the story was rather mundane, the way it unfolded and the world it took place in were executed with a level of creativity that made me jealous as heck. But it wasn't just an imaginative world. The presentation and the writing were wonderfully done and had me hooked all the way. Every dialogue was natural and believable. It wasn't a banal lore dump or vehicular dialogue that told me where to go and what to do next. The writing revealed enough new information to keep me engaged, while also withholding just enough to prompt further questions. My mind was blown at the end of Act 2. And that is all I'm gonna say about the story. You really have to experience it for yourself. Another standout feature that brought the author's vision to life was the incredible voice cast and art design. All environments were gorgeous to look at and full of imagination, so striking and colorful, yet so devoid of life at the same time. However, this is also where my first criticism arises. I already had a feeling when watching early previews of streamers showing the gameplay. The beautiful environments could not mask the fact that the world was empty, lifeless and mostly consisted of only corridors with a few nooks and crannies to stray off the beaten path for a moment. I never felt like I belonged, which admittedly was most likely the intended goal. Although exploration was rewarded with items, at the time I found them, they were barely anything more than text somewhere on the screen. Except for a few journals along the way, it just wasn't rewarding enough for me. And as such, it quickly became boring to explore. All of this created a strange disconnect that never fully immersed me in the world. I also think the sense of scale the game conveyed played a role. There was something off about it, and I don't just mean the overworld. Where the writing was so engaging, the environments were the exact opposite. I don't know how else to explain it. The other part of the gameplay was, of course, the combat. Its novelty wore off after about 10 to 15 hours and slowly became a drag. I don't mind turn-based games. I finished Divinity, Original Sin 1 and 2 in co-op. What vexed me was waiting for enemy combos and their weird pauses and timings. I am very impatient, unfortunately. I hated being unable to do anything while some opponent wasted my time with its antics. At the same time, I had to pay attention to perform dodges or parries. Honestly, I would have been more okay without the interactive elements. I understand that this is a me problem, which is why I said in the beginning that the objective side of me considers Expedition 33 to be a great game. The subjective side only found it okay. Nevertheless, I was happy that I played and finished it. The story and art design were truly something special. The music was good too, although the vocal tracks became irritating quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if Sandful Interactive will be rewarded for their work at the end of the year when the many gaming awards are announced. And deservedly so. I do think highly of the game, even though it wasn't a smash hit for me. What made it bearable was its very fair price of 50 euros. On the technical front, it performed well. I started with a Radeon 7900 XT before I switched to a 9070 XT. Either GPU managed 1440p or 4K with a couple of tweaks. You can see the 7900 XT's performance in my gameplay performance video, which I posted a while back. I didn't encounter any issues going on the 33rd Expedition on Linux, and the performance deficit compared to Windows 11 is negligible. Unreal Engine's traversal stutter made itself known occasionally, but apart from that, it was buttery smooth. My only complaint about the technology is the omission of an FSR upscaling option. The game only supports Unreal's TSR or Intel's XESS. Both are solid options in their own right and I was happy with TSR. That is, until I discovered OptiScaler. More importantly, without FSR present in the game, AMD's drivers cannot override it with the latest FSR 4 implementation, which would be a significant benefit. And with that, I'm at the end of my benchmark and mini review of Clear Obscure Expedition 33. Thank you for watching.